Well, the last day of uh, the AGOA Forum taking place here in Nasreka in Johannesburg. That's where my colleague Aldrin St. Pierre is broadcasting from. Aldrin, I understand that you have a guest in the studio with you there. Well, certainly, Chriselda. I'm joined in studio by the Minister of Industrialization and Trade in Namibia, Lucia Lipumbu. She will be speaking to us about some of the important issues that they want to be raised during the summit and also some of the outcomes that they want to, uh, that they want to see. And if you look, for instance, at the statement that was released by the Namibian ambassador, um, the ambassador of the U.S., rather, to Namibia, Randy Berry, he says that since 2017, um, this deal has led to at least $30 million um, dollars in a trade that has been unlocked in Namibian firms. So we'll be discussing more around that and also looking at some of the tr tr strategic uh, decisions that have been taken by Namibia when it comes to uh, finding new markets for their industries. Uh, Minister, good morning. Thank you so much for making time for us. Good morning, and I'm happy to be here with you. Some of the critical issues that Namibia wants to be see wants to see being resolved during this summit. What are those? Thank you very much. Uh, Namibia have been participating in the Agoa Forum ever since 2019, and of course, uh, the first thing that we would call for is the extension of Agoa. And I'm saying that at the background of the fact that in 2019, when we went to the summit in Abidjan, as a country, we were identified as one of those countries that had no implementation strategy and utilization strategy. Uh, coming back home, we consulted with the then ambassador of the USA to Namibia. Uh, then together with USAID Trade Hub, we were able to develop our utilization strategy in a speed of time within one year. And then we were able to also put up an action plan that have three phases. And that was focusing on the, on the goods and products that we were to to export in three phases, the, the, the short term, the medium term, and then the long term. Mm. And I, I would sit here today and, and feel we have succeeded in doing that since we, from 2020, started exporting uh, our beer, uh, our charcoal, and of course, uh, uh, and currently we are ex exporting also our beef. Mm. And, and, and then those are part of the phase, phase one uh, but trade between us and, and the USA have been in existence, but not under the AGOA. And, and, and that have now just uh, complemented uh, the trade activities in terms of minerals, semi-precious stones, and all other goods and services that we have been exchanging. Uh, another point of us looking at uh, benefiting from is, is uh, the establishment of regional value chains. Regional value chains that talks to capacity building for Namibian SMEs, yeah. Namibian uh, enterprises at whatever and, level. And when we, when we speak about regional capacity building, we speak about the SADC region? Yes, we, we're talking about the SACU region okay. because we enter various agreements as a, as a SACU configuration where, where we, we have uh, now under the SACU configuration uh, came up with an initiative of uh, regional value chains and, and distributed uh, uh, responsibility amongst each other to champion any of the sectors that we have identified, the five sectors that we believe we have a niche opportunities on, and the five sectors that we believe could uh, get us more goods to infuse in the market, mm -hmm. in the USA market. Yeah. What other opportunities do you think are still available that uh, Namibia can tap into? You did mention the issue around, um, for instance, with the charcoal that you are exporting. But are there any other major um, products that you think uh, Namibia can, can actually export to the US? And if possible at all, what's the, what's the trade deficit like? The, the grapes, the dates, uh, the leather and leather products, uh, the art and artifacts materials, and then we look at the uh, oils and, and cosmetic products. Those are other categories of, of goods that we believe we, we have an opportunity to, uh, as, as well as the inputs to certain production of medicine. But then we are saying, if we have identified South Africa as, as, as a champion in the pharmaceutical products. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we first have to give our inputs in terms of, uh, let me say, the devil clause that we, we, are, we, we are extracting to South Africa to 
maybe just doing a, 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 a first level of value addition to make sure we dry them out, we pack them in a manner that they are required to come here for further processing so that at the end of the day, we have finished the goods to, to infuse in the market. And, and when it comes to the minerals, I, I want to believe that if you have followed international news, mm. uh, His Excellency President Genkop was in, in the, uh, Belgium a week ago where he made a pronouncement that going forward, Namibia would want to export their minerals in a finished product form and not raw materials anymore. And this is a clarion call to us all in the Sadak region, in the Saku region, uh, value addition. And, and, and we must also uh, understand that where we are heading in terms of trade, everything is becoming digital. Yeah. So we need to be capacitated in terms of uh, the digital focus. How do we trade uh, and, and digitize uh, our goods in terms of uh, uh, how, how we exhibit also? I have seen some booths here uh, that are exhibiting in a digital form. And, and, and the gone are the days that you can carry now your cargo in, 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 a, in a plane or in a ship to bring and come and exhibit here. We do it through a digital mode, and, and then we need to capacitate our traders at that level to see to it that they are responsive mm -hmm. to the current developments of, of the, the modernization uh, modernization trade that we, we, yeah. we are uh, uh, leveraging on. One of the major issues also that have been raised um, during um, the discussions that have been taking place, including when you had the business to business conversations, was the issue around logistics, and then also the issue around infrastructure, and then electricity supply. Um, where Namibia is currently standing, does Namibia feel that it, it is positioned well and strategically to foster beneficiation, which also requires a, a good supply, a sustainable supply of electricity? Where we are si seated now and where we are heading, we, we feel we are positioning ourselves. We might not be fully positioned as it now, but we have started by expansion of our port uh, which have then now have been magnified for more space for cargo of goods and services that are to come in. And secondly, logistically, we're looking at the roads infrastructures. Namibian have, have been ranked for, for consecutive three or four years as a country in Africa with the best roads. And then we are saying now we, we are venturing into the green reality of where we are. Green hydrogen and ammonia are, are the new energy sources that we're looking at as we are venturing into renewable energy. And, and the sources of energy as we know that uh, energy becomes an input to the industrialization agenda that we, we, we are so much yearning about. And, and all these to us are, are paths that are assisting us to ready ourselves for the future in terms of uh, making sure that we, we, we have infrastructures in place that would assist us to trade better and faster and easier. And, and, and uh, as we look at the reality of the statistics, we could do better. And, and, and the deficit, uh, as it now, uh, there is a gap. But I believe if we are to capacitate our entrepreneurs at all levels, we will be able to, to, to slow down and to, 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 to bring across a, a, a smaller, uh, kind of approach in, in ensuring that we close the gap of, 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 of the trade uh, uh, barriers yep. that we have now and, and, and the gap thereof in, in terms of the deficit that we have. Yeah, we're about to play a package now from our Minister of um, w Minister of Women and Children and People with Disabilities, Dr. Mm -hmm. Nkosa Zanathaminizum. But I quickly want to know from Namibia's side, when it comes to the question around transformation as well as the inclusion of young people and women in the economy, what strides have been made and what efforts are you making currently? Namibia had taken a strategic uh, decision of uh, mainstreaming women and youth in all levels of leadership. Can it be at the private sector or the government level? Uh, we, we should brace ourselves as an example, especially in the SADC region, because in, in our parliament we have a 46% representation of women. And then we are modeling this to the private sector. We are saying at the corporate level, if you have a chairperson of a board 
who is a man, then the deputy must be a woman. If we have a woman who is chairing the board, then the deputy must be a man. So it goes up to a business level. However, we have a specific quota defined, uh, in, especially in, 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 in industries that were dominated by men. In the past, you would never find an, eng an engineer, engineer as a woman. Uh, we have them. We have them as it now. And, and we are saying small-scale traders are mostly women. Mm -hmm. And we want to turn that around. Why not women becoming uh, uh, bigger entrepreneurs and, and uh, inter entrepreneurs of notes that should lead and champion the aspect of us exporting goods and services to other countries. It's, it's a trend that is slow, as, as we, we may, but there are specific interventions through the Ministry of Gender, because we also have it there, yeah. that, that would assist these women and youth with equipment, that would assist with capacity building. Uh, and we have various interventions at the ministry level that we offer trainings, we, we offer some injection in terms of the equipment aid scheme that would assist and empower these women to do better and to become uh, operators in the mainstream of the economy.